This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Got some important updates to share with you as inflation heats up to 8.6%. What does the president and White House have to say about it? I'll play the video clips of what they said. And it brings up the important question, would it help to have another round of stimulus checks? Probably yes, since it is an election year and a lot of people are suffering. So we're seeing a lot of pressure being put on the Biden administration to bring more relief. We're seeing the child tax credit start to make a comeback as different organizations are pressuring to bring back the $300 monthly child tax credits. Also, states are starting to add more stimulus checks, tax rebate checks, and other types of gas checks as we have a new state offering $225 checks, another state offering $500 checks. I'll give you some all those updates and some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below, and I'm giving out $200 checks to my subscribers. I'll talk more about that later on in the video, but first, inflation rose 8.6% in May, highest since 1981. So things are getting really hot right now, and it is worse than expected. So consumer price index rose 8.6% in May from a year ago, the highest increase since December of 1981. Core inflation, excluding food and energy, rose 6%. Both were higher than expected. What does the president have to say about that, and how is this affecting your normal life? Take a look at this video clip right here, and then I'll talk about some other things and give you stimulus check updates after that. Take a look. You saw him today not even try to sugarcoat these numbers because really there's no sugarcoating to be done given it was a very unpleasant surprise for the White House that was hoping these numbers were going to moderate at least slightly in May and of course instead they accelerated and when you heard from President Biden today he didn't try to make any predictions about when inflation is going to start to go down and instead he tried to empathize with Americans who are feeling the pain. I understand Americans are anxious, and they're anxious for good reason. President Biden staring down a massive political liability. Make no mistake about it. I understand inflation is a real challenge to American families. New data shows consumer prices soared last month, sending inflation climbing 8.6 percent from last year, the highest since 1981. Biden delivering the bad news today after predicting six months ago that the inflation crisis had hit its peak. I think you'll see it change uh, um, sooner than quicker than more rapidly than it will take than most people think. Prices are now higher for everything from food, fuel, rent to used cars, as Biden officials say that taming inflation is their highest priority. We are open to ideas. Again, some of them require working with Congress. The president is focused on lowering costs for families. But those same officials say that the bulk of the response will fall to the Federal Reserve, as Friday's numbers only offer more reason for the central bank to continue raising interest rates. As part of his plan, I know this doesn't sound like a plan, but first and foremost, he respects the independence of the Federal Reserve. The troubling figures could spell doom for Democrats in the upcoming midterm elections this November as Biden lashed down at Republicans, shipping conglomerates, Russian President Putin, and oil companies today. Exxon made more money than God this year. What are your thoughts on that? And what do you think about President Biden's explanation for all of the inflation? Uh, take a look at this. So Biden insists inflation top economic priority, then blames everyone else for it. So with uh, Putin, Ukraine, as well as a lot of other things. What are your thoughts on how President Biden navigated around that? At this point, there's almost no way to fix it. There's no uh, explanation of when it's going to end. What is going on here? So uh, when it comes to what can be done, would another round of stimulus checks help Americans cope with inflation? What are your thoughts on that? Because inflation is higher and prices are are a lot higher than the pandemic, or actually situation is probably a lot worse than the pandemic with there was no income before, but now any income that is made is just eaten away by inflationary costs with food and gas and everything else that it takes to live a normal life in America. Should there be another round of stimulus checks? Well, as it's an election year, it seems more likely. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but first, here is what the White House economic advisor has to say about what's being done and what can be done about inflation. Back to inflation, as we said, rising more than expected in May to 8.6 over a year ago, highest since 81. Joining us for the first response from the White House and the administration, National Economic Council Director Brian Deese. Brian, good morning. Good to have you. It's good to be here. Uh, 
watching headline, but also watching core. Six tenths is the same as five of the last eight months. Uh, year to date, average gain is only five tenths. Um, is there is the view from the White House that core may actually be reaccelerating? Well, look, I think the news today underscores the importance of what the president is doing, which is identifying and fight, fighting inflation as the top economic priority for the country right now. Uh, certainly, it's heartening to see some moderation uh, on annual uh, core. Uh, and so uh, we will keep a close eye on that. And obviously, there's a, di a distinction emerging between core CPI and core PCE. But at the end of the day, what we saw in May, we didn't need this report to underscore. But what we know in May is that energy prices have driven up the price of the pump for families and consumers and the price of fuel oil uh, and natural gas is uh, is working its way through the economy and affecting elements of the core as well. Uh, we see that, for example, in airline prices. So uh, that is uh, that is our challenge. That is our focus. And the issue now is how can we actually make progress on concrete steps that would improve that? Uh, we're very hopeful and we're calling on Congress to move on shipping legislation that would bring down the cost of moving goods overseas. We talked to a number of CEOs over the course of this week that say that that would be a game changer in terms of uh, them not having to pass on those prices to consumers. And we're also focused on how we can lower the deficit so that uh, fiscal policy can be complementary to what the Fed is trying to do. Right. I don't know if you've been able to catch any of our programming this week, but it seems like at the top of every show we talk about what outreach from the White House to the oil industry would mean in lowering energy prices. We've talked about this uh, before. Um, why, why haven't you had more direct conversations with oil executives about production, or have you, and we just don't know about it? Well, I did, I did hear some of it. I heard uh, Jim's commentary as well. Uh, we've had conversations, including this week, uh, with CEOs of oil companies, uh, we'll, and we will continue to do that. Uh, look, th th we operate in, uh, in a market, a global uh, oil market, uh, and then a market for refined uh, product as well. And there's a very strong market incentive right now. Uh, but we should start with some uh, facts. Highest natural gas production in the United States ever happening right now under President Biden. We're about to hit the highest oil production levels uh, ever uh, under President Biden. We have real challenges, and part of it is that the oil industry, the, the refinery industry, took 800 million barrels a day of refinery capacity offline before this president took office uh, during the uh, pandemic. And so right now we are short refinery capacity because of those decisions. Those decisions were decisions made by those companies as fiduciaries. And now we need to work on what we can do to actually get more capacity and more product onto the market. But I wanna be very clear, any constructive step that would actually help in the very immediate term to try to bring more refinery capacity online, get more output out of refineries, we have put that request directly to companies. We'll continue to do so. If there's any practical step from the government's perspective, we stand ready to do that. Well, uh, Brian, look, you're a realist, and I appreciate that. Uh, we have to go brown to green first. Uh, the great Larry Fink, who I really love, has really outlined a, a, a path. And you know what? You haven't done it. You haven't just said, okay, listen, guys in the Permian, Oil's at 120. We know that you're returning a lot of money to your shareholders. We need you to do what's right. In return, we know you need pipe. We know that natural gas would come down dramatically if they had enough pipe. I love your number, but your number's about the number amount of pipe. Even if we just decide that we can keep the price of oil down by actually exporting it and get oil down in the future, you know, it's a win for you. But what, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of being seen with guys who are involved with fossil fuel? Are you afraid of the president going to Permian rather than Saudi Arabia? Come on, man. Come on. You know the real. Look, you know the real. Look, you know what has look, to be look, done. Look, you're look, let, me, let me let me let me just tell you what the president has done. The president traveled to Europe and he said, I am going to increase natural gas exports to Europe over the course of a couple of months. What has happened? Natural gas imports are out of the United States are up 20 percent. The share of U.S. natural gas going to Europe has doubled. That's happened over just the last couple of months because the president went out, said that to the world. And in fact, right now, the reason why natural gas prices are going up is because we have dramatically increased exports of natural gas. That's what's happening right now. The price of natural gas is going up because those exports are increasing. So we're, we're, uh, we, are, we are acting uh, and we are communicating that we're prepared to do things in the media term. And at the same time, to your point, there is a transition. The market is driving it, and we are going to take steps to encourage that. But 
Uh, we're, uh, we're practical and pragmatic about this, uh, but it's also important that we look at what's actually happening. Natural gas is a great example of that. What are your thoughts on what Brian Dees has to say at this point? Like I said before, it almost seems like there is no control over this inflation. Nothing can be done. Nothing can be done about the gas, the food prices. Uh, and six months ago, they said that it was going to end, but yet it's higher than ever before. What, what can be done about this? So back to that question, would another round of stimulus checks help Americans cope with inflation? According to this article, basically saying yes, it can help. Should there be another round of stimulus checks? Let me know down in the comments below. Would this help you? What amount should it be? Well, there is starting to be a lot more pressure uh, that's going on right now. So as Democrats released plan to boost Social Security by $2,400 a year. Uh, this was introduced by Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I have more details on what Bernie Sanders said in yesterday's video. If you want to check that after watching this one, you can see more details of what Bernie Sanders said there. But there are more plans and promises that have to be kept, right? So this is one of the promises that President Biden made. And then when it comes to stimulus checks and child tax credits, this was another promise that was made. So stimulus update, almost half of families are struggling to buy food without child tax credit payments. So those $250 to $300 per month child tax credits, those were a huge help to families. Now, I know a lot of you may not have kids, may not have families or benefit from this, but there could be other types of checks just like this. So basically what it's saying here is the boosted child tax credit did not get extended for 2022 and new data reveals how badly families are hurting in the absence of monthly payments they received during the second half of 2021. Now what is being done about the child tax credit? Well, we're starting to see a lot of organizations, civil rights groups demand Senate reinstate desperately needed child tax credit. So there was uh, a bunch of groups actually that are setting, uh, sent this letter to, it was actually more than 40 civil rights and racial justice groups on Monday called on the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to ensure that the U.S. Senate votes to reinstate the monthly enhanced child tax credit, which last year was credited with slashing child poverty by 30%. So child tax credit was another promise, not a campaign promise, but basically last year they said child tax credit will continue in 2022. It did not. Although there are 10 states that are doing it, which I mentioned two videos ago of all the different 10 states that have the child tax credit. Basically in this letter, it says it feels totally inexcusable that Congress isn't acting to reinstate those child tax credit payments, especially right now as families are struggling so much. And then they said a few other things, gave some statistics. Statistics. Uh, should the child tax credits be reinstated? Should there be a lump sum monthly credit? Let me know your thoughts on that. So we're starting to see a lot more pressure and the idea of a stimulus check, I don't think is, uh, I would say a few months ago, probably not probable, but as we're getting closer to the midterm elections and inflation costs really high, I would say it's becoming a little bit more probable. But states are taking it into their own hands now, seeing how desperate people are getting and how the people are barely surviving. So cashing in, millions of Americans may get extra $225 payments under new proposals, see if you would qualify. So this is going on in Indiana. Indiana's Republican governor is proposing a plan to send $225 in payments to Hozier taxpayers amid the highest inflation. So you know that things are really bad when a Republican governor is actually proposing whoops, proposing the $225 check. So uh, Governor Holcomb's plan calls for $225 payments to help taxpayers with inflation and high gas prices. And then also we're seeing in Virginia here, uh, Virginians... Virginians could receive up to $500 in tax rebates under new budget. It seems like almost every state is coming out with some type of tax rebate, stimulus check, gas check. So what's going on here is the compromise budget that the state lawmakers approved at the beginning of June includes direct tax relief authorizing rebate checks of up to $250 per single filer and $500 per married couple slightly lower than what the Republicans had first proposed. Uh, so yeah, we're seeing more state stimulus checks and things are getting really desperate, uh, not just for the people, but also for the politicians that want to maintain power. If Democrats want to keep control of the House and the Senate, 
they're probably gonna have to offer up some big money. Stimulus checks, child tax credits, increase in social security, student loan forgiveness, a lot of those benefits, uh, not just talk about it and propose it, but actually deliver on those promises in order to get the votes come uh, November for the midterm election. So it's gonna be really interesting. We're gonna start to see a ton of proposals now. So it should be really interesting over the next few weeks and months. And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully brighten your day a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Oh, there you guys, I didn't see this. Can I tell you something? What I wanna do is go to the moon. Uh, I need to go to the moon. <laughs> Never mind. What do you want? Tell me in the comments below and see if what you want. If if you want to do something, then do a couple of me. Do do what you want because that after you get too old to not do what you want. Oh, bye. Get the moon, bye. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your time and support, and to show my appreciation show my appreciation to you and to the YSOS community. I'm giving out $200 checks. I'm going to make the announcement on Monday. I just want to let everybody know that I will make the announcement of how to win those $200 checks on Monday. Also yesterday, my daughter, was in, uh, Bella, was in a play and it was so cool. So here's like some clips of that. And she had some lines and she was singing. Uh, it was really, really cool to see that. Um, and she really enjoyed it too. It was the play Annie. So she was just one of the girls in Annie. Very cool, very cool show. Um, and if you want to check out any of my other videos, my other channels, you could click up here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.